For 22 million black Americans, the dream has been deferred, the promises unfulfilled. Twice as likely as whites to be unemployed. Three times as likely as whites to die in childbirth. Three times as likely to live in poverty. In the 50s and 60s, there was segregation here in the Bay Area and all over the country. There was a curfew for young blacks my age in the Fillmore District where I live. It was a disturbing thing. There were civil rights movements here in San Francisco. They would show on the national news the dogs being sicked on the marches, being sprayed with the hoses, being beaten with the batons. You would see that. The first time I got arrested was 13 years old. I was out there shooting dice with the older guys. I was just being bad as a youngster. At other times, same thing, being incorrigible, in and out. I went to the California Youth Authority. The last phase you go before you go to prison system. I was accepted to work in the print shop there. And that was really my first introduction to graphic designing. It was suggested that I go to City College. That's how I got exposed to how to put together publications. The whole advertising field was predominantly white. There were myself and maybe one other African-American student in the class. You're coming up at a time when this whole black power movement is coming about. I was beginning to do artwork in connection with that. Huey Newton and Bobby Seale took up the challenge and started the Black Panther Party. The symbol of the Panther came from Alabama during the Civil Rights Movement. There's a discipline, determination to want to fight against the injustice. Young people who were confronted with the same issues that they are today, police abuse, justified murders of young blacks, unemployment, wars going on, even though some of that may have been a foreign language for me from coming out of the hood and where I was, I didn't come in as intellectual. Many people didn't come in the party as scholars came in because of the desire of wanting to change things. Huey said, we're going to start the newspaper. We want you to be the revolutionary artist. My mom thought I was crazy. They took out an insurance policy on me because they didn't think I was going to survive. <laughs> The initial idea was to inform and to enlighten and to educate people about the basic issues in the community and to tell our story from our own perspective. Initially, it was myself, Elgis Cleaver, running the whole thing. We used to work out of his studio apartment. We had an X-Acto blade, some white sheets of paper. We would typeset them on the typewriter with the ball, cut and paste them with rubber cement glue. We couldn't only afford but one color ink, and so it was black plus one other color. But as we evolved, we developed into a full-fledged operation. The height was 400,000 papers on a weekly basis. We were creating a culture, a culture of resistance, a culture of defiance and self-determination. The party lives by a 10-point program. Its demands include an immediate end to police brutality, and the murder of black people. Huey wanted me to draw this pig, and on this pig, we were going to put this badge number. I came to me, why don't I put the belt around it? Stand it up on the two hoofs, and it took on a life of its own. It transcended the Black Panther Party and African American community, and that became the symbol of those who were abusing their power. The panther was an animal that if you put it into a corner, it would attack. But it wouldn't attack anyone unless it had to defend itself. Contrary to what people say about the panther, everybody didn't carry guns. And the guns were only for a limited part of the Black Panther Party. Around 69, we began to focus on the social program. We used to get up at 3, 4 in the morning, cook the breakfast for kids before they went to school. To see to it that our children could eat in the mornings, we had to be strong. We had a free breakfast program all across the country. But not only the Black Panther Party had it, but you had community begin to do breakfast programs. The treasurer of the state of California said that the Black Panther Party was feeding more hungry children than the United States government, which was true. That's how you had the free lunch program implemented into the school. I became the Minister of Culture because we began to evolve and grow 
community wasn't then a reading community, but they learned through observation and participation. People would get the gist of the story through just looking at the pictures and maybe reading the captions. By beginning to mimic woodcuts with markers and pens, playing with shadows and photographs to get that bold, broad look. My art is about enlightening and informing people about issues. Not necessarily everything I do is provocative. A lot of it is based on fact. It may be a provocative interpretation, but it's not a distorted interpretation. You're leading by example. Whether people agree with you or not, they're beginning to do it their own way. So you transforming mindsets and thinking, and therefore you become public enemy number one. One of the locations where we used to get our paper printed told us later on that they would let the FBI come in and read the paper. You had to dress enough criminal elements like Panthers going into these businesses that were supporting us and shaking them down and threatening them in the name of the Panthers. A young African-American brother who came by the office one day with a forged letter on Panther stationery saying, why are you threatening me with this letter, asking me for more money when I'm doing the best I can? And he's shaking. He's shaking. And Bobby's trying to explain to him that that's not us, that's the police. Black Panther Party's demise was COINTELPRO, the government's program to destroy and discredit the party by any means necessary. J. Edgar Hoover is on record as branding the Panthers the greatest threat to the internal security of the country infiltrating the party with agent provocateurs to create dissension. They were exploiting our limitations as young people. You have to understand this was a youth movement. Black Panther Party were young people from 16 and a half, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22 years of age. Today, the actual organization doesn't exist, but it left a blueprint for people to be inspired by. Those social programs, being able to use my art to enlighten and to form and educate, all that is a part of the legacy. Art has relevancy, whether it's to exploit you or pacify you or to enlighten you and inform you. It's a language. That's the power of it.